Hello and welcome to the CNY Business Connection. I'm Jason Weinstein. Coming up on this week's show, how one woman hopes that her old-fashioned skills and new technology can result in her dream business coming true. Plus, the powers of persuasion. You need them. Bob Stessy stops by to tell you how you can use them for your business. But we'll begin with the latest in business news from around the area. Some help is on the way for people who are looking for a job in the area. On-the-job training is a program that pairs up businesses with workers and covers from 50 to 90 percent of training costs for the new hires. The program is designed to encourage companies to hire people who have been out of work long term. Even better news, it looks like the job market in our area is improving. Education and health has shown growth as well as that replacement churn. Uh, manufacturing had been our hardest hit area and the one that we saw the, the broadest of losses. Um, most recently we've, all, we've seen a shoring of those losses and even some job gains, um, which is fairly significant uh, since we've lost quite a few jobs over the last three years. Harris also says that the unemployment rate locally is lower than the national average. He hopes to see that more people are working when this year's first numbers come in. Consumer confidence levels in the fourth quarter rose 9 points in the Syracuse region, 4.5 points in the Utica-Rome region, and 1.3 points in the Binghamton area. That's according to the latest quarterly survey of nine metropolitan statistical areas in New York by the Siena College Research Institute. The confidence index soared to 69.3 in the Syracuse region, increased to 60.8 in the Utica-Rome region, and rose to 58.4 in the Binghamton area. The readings ranked Syracuse 2nd, Utica-Rome 8th, and Binghamton 9th, among the nine areas surveyed, according to SRI. Another contract for Lockheed Martin in Owego, the latest announced by Congressman Maurice Hinchy, is for $72 million. It comes from the Navy, and it's for more work on the cockpits of the MH-60 helicopter fleet. Lockheed and Hinchy say the latest contract and others recently landed by Lockheed will help sustain hundreds of jobs at the Owego plant. Meanwhile, BAE Systems has decided not to sell off assets, which include the Westover facility where some 1,300 people work. The Westover plant develops a variety of devices for aviation, including power systems and control devices. The plant has also produced hybrid power plants used for buses, including half a dozen in Broome County. BAE had been looking for a buyer since September. M&T Bank Corporation earned $204 million in the fourth quarter, up 48.9 percent from a year earlier. Earnings per share in the period totaled $1.59, up from $1.04 in the fourth quarter of 2009. Operating earnings per share totaled $1.52. The Buffalo-based bank has total assets of more than $68 billion and more than 800 branches in New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, Delaware, New Jersey, and Washington, D.C. M&T is the number two bank in the Syracuse area deposit market and the top bank in the Binghamton deposit market. This is the culmination of the 60 hours of blood, sweat and tears that they've put in. Through Broome Community College, 13 participants graduated from the Entrepreneurial Assistance Program. The entrepreneurs hope to make it in the Broome County area. And director of the program, Jan Herzog, says some are on their way. Some of them have actually started their businesses already. Others plan on launching them in the next year. During the graduation, awards were given out for the best business plan. Rebecca Chiodi tied for second and third place. She shares her most important lesson of the program. I've learned um, how to market. Marketing is always a difficult thing because that's the key to your business. Chiodi specializes in custom-made clothing, specifically women's nightwear, and she's using the current economy to her advantage. There's a trend going toward not people not wanting to shop at the big box stores anymore. They prefer the boutiques and the country stores and the small stores, and those are the stores that I'm hoping to get into. Whether or not some of the businesses will take off isn't a sure thing. It's really kind of hard to gauge what will be successful and won't in this area. It's kind of, let's throw it out there and, and see. We hope you enjoyed that. When we come back, one woman hoping her old-fashioned skills can merge with new technology to make her dream business come true. Plus, the latest bit of business wisdom from someone who has lived it thanks to our friends at Prendismo.com. I'm Norm Poltenson. 
I've published the Central New York Business Journal for 25 years. Our success is based on the fact that we know only one audience, owners and managers of businesses in Central New York. We publish stories for them, we don't offer sound bites, and we always source our information. Maybe technology's changed since I started publishing 25 years ago, but not our mission. You can always rely on the Central New York Business Journal providing your business news. I'm Susan from Tarjack. You may know us as the source for the best camo for your guns and bows, but we do so much more. Our custom work with automotive parts can transform any vehicle, our ATVs, sleds, four-wheelers, motorcycles. We've received national recognition for our work with Orange County Choppers, and we are most proud of our partnership with the Future Servicemen by providing customized helmets for the Army-Navy game. From the national stage to your favorite hunting ground, it's Tarjack. Welcome back. Can old-fashioned skills merge with new technology to make a dream business come true? One woman hopes so. Amanda Kenny has more. Rebecca Kyoto had a passion for a trade that is rapidly disappearing. My grandmother was a seamstress, my mother was a seamstress and tailor, so I've always been sewing. But didn't think she could make a living doing what she loved. It would just hurt because I wanted to sew so badly and it was such a production so I forget about it. But couldn't imagine living without a needle and thread. The passion was screaming at me. It was time to do something different. I had been retail management way too long. Um, I wasn't happy doing it anymore. A man Rebecca was dating knew what would make her happy and that was sewing. He pushed her but back down when she refused to believe that she could make a business out of her trade. He passed away two years ago, and um, that actually was my aha moment. Um, when he passed away, I was devastated, of course, but um, I realized life was too short to be unhappy. And that's how Simply Rebecca Studios was born. It's made me extremely happy. You know, most people will go, I just want to be happy in life. Well, happiness is... Um, I was told one time, happiness is moments in life, it's not an entire life, and that's true. And Rebecca says it's fairly easy to get started in sewing. All you need is some thread, scissors, some needles, then before you know it, you've sewn on your very own button. Then you can move on to bigger things like trying to tackle the sewing machine. Passion's key. You have to love what you're doing. There's no sense in starting a business if you're not going to love it. And Rebecca loves what she does. Plus, it's successful. At Etsy.com, Rebecca sells her handmade products, like women's nightwear, to what she estimates is a potential 7 million buyers. I think women like to feel pretty and elegant at the end of a really hard day. And um, if they can have a nice, comfortable, pretty nightgown to put on while they rest for the rest of the evening, um, that kind of makes them smile. And that's what it's all about. Why not do what, what's singing in your soul? And, and, um, you, and I've made it work. She certainly has, taking an old trade and mixing it with today's technology. Our thanks to Amanda for that. Time now for the latest bit of business wisdom from someone who has lived it, thanks to our friends at Prendismo.com, partnering with entrepreneurs for success. Leadership is going to change over time, depending on, on how you define success for your company. If you define success as a several million dollar exit in a short period of time, the leadership changes are gonna happen in shorter intervals and more frequently. If you define success as something that's gonna happen with a exit or a transition to somebody else in 20, 25, or 30 years, your leadership changes are going to happen less frequently and the intervals are going to be much longer between those, those changes. And it, and it goes back, and, and I hate to simplify it, but it goes back to growth trajectory and the manager's personals, the, the the, the leader's personal growth trajectory. And the closer they are, the fewer changes that are gonna, gonna happen. And, and why is it? It's primarily a function of experience. And so I believe that leadership 
really develops through experience. Mm -hmm. And you're much better suited to talk about um, the research behind that. Um, but from my experience, being put in situations, responding to those situations, succeeding or failing, and then thinking about that makes you better. And so someone who has experienced uh, the growth of a company from 15 employees to 50 employees has a reference point that someone who's never done that just doesn't have. And so if you're trying to get through that time frame, 15 to 50 employees in a 12 month period, you better have someone who's done it not once, preferably two or three times until you've sat in those discussions and you've been part of those discussions. Um, you can read about them, but sitting there, it, it's just different, you know. We hope you enjoyed that. When we come back, it's our business improvement segment. We'll have our latest tech tip from Harold Bates at Robotics One. Plus, Bob Stezzi stops by to talk about the powers of persuasion and how you can put them to use for your business. I'm Norm Poltenson. I've published the Century New York Business Journal for 25 years. Our success is based on the fact that we know only one audience, owners and managers of businesses in Central New York. We publish stories for them, we don't offer sound bites, and we always source our information. Maybe technology's changed since I started publishing 25 years ago, but not our mission. You can always rely on the Central New York Business Journal providing your business news. Welcome back. Time now for our business improvement segment, and we'll kick it off with our latest tech tip from Harold Bates at Robotics One. Harold stops by to talk about protecting your business with the Untangle Firewall. Hi, I'm Harold Bates from Robotics One, and for this week's technology focus, I'd like to talk about Untangle. As business owners, if you've lived through the nightmare of having your network invaded, this segment is for you. Your first line of defense should be a good firewall. Firewalls keep your internal network separate from the internet at large. Ideally, they allow your users appropriate access out to the internet, but keep inappropriate users on the internet out of your networks. Many of today's firewalls incorporate lots of additional functions, such as content filtering, intrusion detection, spam filtering, and virus filtering. I've used many of these products in the past, and now there is a low-cost and highly effective alternative called Untangle. Untangle is really a Linux operating system designed to filter, route, and secure traffic in and out of your network. In addition to the above functionality, it includes secure VPN access, intrusion prevention, and web proxying. And the best part about it is that it costs nothing to download and works on common equipment such as an older PC with one gigabyte of memory. Simple to use, easy to operate, and with a rich assortment of reports available, Untangle is a low-cost, highly effective method of securing your data on your network. This is a big deal because many companies pay thousands of dollars for the same level of security. For help with seeing how you can incorporate Untangle into your network, contact Robotics One. Call 607-484-1080 or visit us on the web at roboticsone.com. Consider Robotics One your network ghostbuster. For Robotics One, I'm Harold Bates. Our thanks to Harold for that. Time now to turn things over to Bob Stezzi from Stezzi Training and Consulting. And today Bob stops by to talk about the powers of persuasion and how to put them to use for your business.
Whether you're a leader in sales or just trying to make a point to a coworker, your skills of persuasion are a necessary skill and a key to success in your organization. In fact, the best idea in the world is worthless if you can't persuade someone to look at it from your point of view. So today we have five tips for you on how to improve your skills of persuasion and be more successful in the workplace. Number one, be clear in your own mind as to what your idea really is. What problems does it solve and how will your idea work? Number two, do your homework. Make sure you're fully prepared. You need to be able to discuss your idea from every aspect and anticipate the likely questions and know how to deal with objections to your idea. Tip number three, think and speak in terms of other people's interests. Let people know how they personally will benefit from your idea. Tip number four is very useful when you're trying to persuade a group to your way of thinking. It's called tin cupping. Tin cupping is meeting with individuals in advance of the meeting and letting them know what your idea is and trying to get some support before you get them together as a group. And tip number five, Take the time to build the relationships with those people that you work with and the people that you're likely to try to persuade, whether they're clients, customers, patients, or students. By building relationships, you can build an atmosphere of trust and increase your credibility, which goes a long way when it comes time for you to persuade them to your way of thinking. If you'd like an in-house workshop for your organization or some one-on-one -on -one coaching on improving your persuasion skills, please visit stesitraining.com. Thank you. And that does it for this episode of the CNY Business Connection. Thank you very much for joining us. Until next time, I'm Jason Weinstein. Have a good one.